Iowa farmers have long known the value of good, rich topsoil. They work to reduce erosion to conserve soil and save expensive chemicals that they've applied to enhance crop growth. Their efforts are not only for the sake of our environment, but for the land's productivity and their own financial well-being. While this link between economics and the environment is especially clear to those involved in agriculture, people everywhere are now realizing that the health of the environment and money in their pocket go hand in hand that using natural resources wisely costs less than wasting them. Roadside management in Iowa is keeping pace with new ideas about taking care of the land. Every county in Iowa has around 2,000 miles of roadsides, six acres for each road mile. Altogether, roadsides cover about 900 square miles of Iowa. County governments that manage roadsides make decisions that affect the environment and the taxpayer's pocketbook. Al Eli works for the Soil Conservation Service. He says the old dirt roads in Iowa were the basis for Iowa's extensive road network. Basically every section line in Iowa has to, had the potential or is a, uh, is a road and this is uh, quite a quite a bit more extensive of a road system than uh, most states in the nation. During the 20s and 30s, Iowa's dirt roads were upgraded, creating a network of all-weather roads. They were crowned to allow for drainage, and ditches running along either side of the roadways were designed to catch drifting snow. This road system became vital to the many rural communities and farms in the state. The upgrading of the road system created steep, bare roadsides that were very difficult to manage. Weeds quickly invaded the bare ground, and erosion on the steep slopes washed the soil away. In the past, county governments used the same methods to control weeds and erosion in roadsides that farmers used to produce hay and pasture. Seeding with brome and alfalfa, mowing, and broadcasting herbicides. Unfortunately, these conventional methods have met with limited success in roadside situations. The non-native hay and pasture species, like brome and alfalfa, are short-lived in Iowa's climate and don't provide sufficient weed and erosion control in roadsides. The high cost of weed control is familiar to farmers. Many have cut their use of chemicals by adopting an integrated approach to pest management using alternatives to herbicides. Many Iowa counties have adopted a similar approach called Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management or IRVM. They began looking not at better ways to kill weeds but at the reasons weeds invade. Al Eli also manages the IRVM County Assistance Office at the University of Northern Iowa. Our approach is, is uh, first off, looking at the vegetative cover, uh, realizing that the non-native vegetation begins to lose its vigor after a period of time. We decided that uh, to prevent problems from existing in roadsides, let's try a different uh, vegetative cover. What roadside managers needed were plants well adapted to Iowa's climate, plants that would last indefinitely and remain healthy enough to prevent erosion and weed invasion. Do such plants exist? They've been here all along. They covered the prairies long before corn was introduced. Falling upon uh, the use of native vegetation seemed almost natural. It's the type of vegetation that developed in Iowa's soils, in Iowa's topography and, and weather conditions. And so um, it be, it, we find it's uh, more tolerant of the cold winters, the hot, dry summers, and uh, can persist through droughty periods. So it's, it's a more aggressive, a more long-lasting vegetative cover. Uh, so it fulfills the, the demands that we place on the vegetation in our roadside. The idea of using native prairie plants on the roadsides, however, is more than a decision to change the type of seed you put in the planter. 
Daryl Smith of the University of Northern Iowa studies prairie reconstruction and helped start the IRVM program. He says roadside management is similar to prairie management. Basically what we're doing in prairie roadsides is trying to restore the prairie remnants that are there so there are certain management techniques that we use in managing prairies that we use in managing these uh, roadside remnants such as burning or maybe enhancing certain species by a particular management program. Same thing goes with reconstruction. When you start planting a roadside that's been under construction, you're basically doing a prairie reconstruction project. There may be a few nuances, but the side of the ditch may be a little bit steeper than we're used to, but basically those are the, the things that we did in prairie reconstruction, and so we're taking that information directly and applying it to the roadside situation. Integrated roadside vegetation management has transformed the entire emphasis of roadside management from treatment of problems to prevention of problems, from controlling weeds to managing the entire plant community. Plant communities develop in certain predictable stages. This process is called succession. Roadside managers must pay close attention to the stage of succession in roadsides. Areas where vegetation has been removed are first colonized by weedy annual plants, then perennial flowers and grasses, followed in some areas by shrubs and trees. In most of Iowa, the highest level of succession is characterized by the native prairie grasses. In a healthy prairie community, desirable plants use up all available moisture and nutrients, leaving nothing for weeds. They occupy all the space, both in the root zone and on the surface. The goal of IRVM is to keep the plant community in the highest stage of succession possible. That you're managing it to put the plants in that are at the end of the succession, so you're eliminating weeds just by the type of vegetation you use. So that reduces your weed control costs, e either by mowing or herbicide use. The conventional practice of planting poorly adapted non-native species creates an ever-increasing need for weed control. Controlling weeds by mowing and spraying interrupts succession, counteracting the goal of IRVM. They were mowing this vegetation very closely and they were keeping everything at a very early stage of succession. So essentially you were encouraging weeds to remain there all the time and not undergo the regular process of succession. But we're getting rid of the blanket or broadcast spraying where they just spray everything in sight, which basically drove the whole roadside back to the early stages of succession and encouraged more weeds to develop. Carefully planned spraying and mowing, however, can help push the plant community toward the higher stages of succession. In certain cases, you may have to mow periodically. You don't mow as close as they used to mow. That still may be a recommended measure in certain places. And then we're not recommending as a part of the integrated program eliminating spraying because we will do spot spraying for particular weed problems that we have. By spraying only the problem areas, counties actually kill more weeds with less herbicide. John Stege has managed roadsides in Fayette County since they started an IRVM program over two years ago. Actually, we're doing just about 10 times as much spraying uh, for about a third of the use of herbicides. So some, somewhere those herbicides were going, whether they were you know, wasted in the ditch or entering our groundwater, whatever they were doing, we're cutting down on the, on the amount of herbicides used and, and we're applying them in the, in the right manner. In addition to the obvious environmental advantages, prudent use of herbicides can boost local economies. We've also saved considerable on the cost of the herbicides and instead of sending the money out of county we're putting uh, 10 people to work part-time in the summertime, mo mostly our college youth. Assisting landowners with erosion problems in adjoining fields is another way IRVM saves county money. If the adjoining landowner doesn't practice good uh, soil retention, we have the problem of uh, siltation in the ditches. And when you get siltation uh, of the ditches, then you're going back to primary succession again, and you have a, a very definite weed problem. In fact, many of our weed managers 
or, or roadside managers can drive down the highway and if they see giant ragweed growing there, they can almost predict that that person has an erosion problem there that's keeping that at the primary stage of succession. Ditches filled with sediment must eventually be cleaned at considerable expense to taxpayers. One of the responsibilities we have is working with landowners to help reduce sediment uh, problems. And this year we did our first uh, terrace project on a farm that uh, had a lot of sedimentation in the ditches. The key to an integrated approach is treating each segment of roadside individually instead of assuming that all roadsides are the same. I mentioned before treating them as a manageable resource instead of a necessary evil. And I guess when we, when we started out in the program, one of the things we like to emphasize is the integrated and the management part of it. And so we can use, if we have one ditch that requires a certain uh, type of treatment, we can go in there and, and do one specific treatment to help solve the problem. Uh, we have ditches where maybe a controlled burn is the right thing to use to bring back some of those prairie remnants. And we can schedule that controlled burn in the spring of the year at the right time and, and do that. And another ditch, we may have to go in there and, and reseed, maybe do some interseeding with our no-till drill. And we can schedule that at the proper time to, to bring that back. And, and maybe the ditch has to be cleaned out and, and the dirt hauled away to a road fill or a driveway project somewhere. And, and then after it's, it's reshaped again and back to what it normally should be, then we can go in there and reseed. By providing food and cover, IRVM may bring back some of the wildlife displaced by intensive farming practices. Some people have indicated, well, if you're increasing a habitat right adjacent to the road, you're just inviting the animals in to be killed. And certainly that's something that we, we're not particularly interested in doing. We would rather not see that happen. Roadside managers must consider where wildlife should be encouraged and where it shouldn't. Not all roadsides are good for wildlife habitat, especially some of those roads that may have a, a high number of vehicles per day. And so the roadside manager will sometimes want to take uh, and utilize those tall grasses or medium-sized grasses where ground nesting birds might be nesting uh, through the summer and place those to the back side of the right-of-way. The first step towards starting an IRVM program is to contact others in your county that may be interested. Well, it's kind of a, a process of first forming the committee, developing the plan, and then making the proposal to the supervisors and, and finally uh, hiring a roadside manager. The county assistance office at the University of Northern Iowa can be a big help in starting a program and making it work. They can supply information, training, educational materials, and other services. Any successes that one county may have, we share that with the other counties. So there's a continual um, sharing and reviewing of information between the counties. We act sort of as a clearinghouse for county roadside information. Arnold Webster grew up in rural Iowa and remembers when roadsides were sanctuaries for native plants and animals. No, you, you can't pin me down to back in the days when the bison roamed the plain and uh, things like that, no. But we farmed with horses, yes, for a while. There's nothing now like that old dirt road used to be. That was a, a place where people would, uh, they, they used to have Studebakers and things like that in the days when I was young, uh, when they would uh, drive especially on the highway to see the and of course they picked them. I know people would uh, pick armloads of prairie flowers, and some appreciated and some didn't. That old dirt road is now blacktopped. For a while it was uh, a gravel road, and uh, now it's wide and high, and people can traverse it without fear of snowdrifts like we had. And, so that's what happens to it. <clears throat> and when they laid it off, it's a picture for an engineer, I'm sure, of precision. And uh, for a biologist, it's uh, a picture of uh, desolation. And that's the change. And what we're seeing in this roadside management is a restoration to the beautiful and uh, useful.
integrated roadside vegetation management can provide Iowans a glimpse of their past. Instead of a perennial headache for county governments, this 900 square miles of Iowa soil could become a self-sustaining tribute to our prairie heritage, a constant reminder of where our state's rich soil came from. John Miller farms near Cedar Falls, Iowa. Well, I think as we as farmers look at a prairie today, we only see remnants of it. We have in the, in the state little preserves, small areas. Maybe they're in a schoolyard. Maybe they're on the backside of a cemetery. Maybe they're a state preserve. But more and more farmers are becoming aware of their heritage and the prairie strictly by looking in the road ditch because that is really the, the the benchmark, the history that is most evident. As we go up and down the roads around here, for example, we'll see the big blue stem, the Indian grass, the switchgrass, and that's really our heritage, and it's evident. In addition to enhancing environmental quality, nurturing wildlife, and improving our state's economy, IRVM has one thing going for it that appeals to almost everyone. The Integrated Roadside Vegetation Management Program is a win-win situation. Not only is it the right thing to do, it's cheaper than the other way. Uh, and if you look at it in the long run, I think that's uh, probably undoubtedly true. Perhaps the most attractive benefit of IRVN is that it efficiently solves a modern problem by bringing back a little of Iowa's past. The past is not all bad, you know. The past has given us some wonderful things. Just look at me. <laughs> <laughs>